we do want to talk a little bit now and give our full review of Megan. Yes. Because we couldn't last week because only Janine was able to see it. Because for some reason, what Megan and Universal and Blumhouse decided to do was go, we'll have it in the US for one week and then everywhere else a week, week after. after. <laughs> Not a month after that would feel a little bit more reasonable or on the same week that would, of course, feel perfect. No, we'll just do it an annoying week after. Yeah, like so why? So nobody why? can talk What's about happening? anything with anybody. At the same time. Yeah. So you finally got to see yes. Megan. I what did. Were your, what were your thoughts? <laughs> Look, I really quite liked Megan. I think it was, it, it, it surprised me for a lot of it, actually. And surprised me in the ways of, I don't think it wasn't as nasty as I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought there was going to be quite, well, a, no, quite a lot of they, splatter. Like, they did I thought cut it was back. Gonna be quite... they, they did cut it back um... because once people saw those original trailers and people were obsessed with the dancing, obsessed with it, they were like, oh, we can get more people in if we make it PG-13. So I believe I heard or read something that they did cut down the gore so that they could. It was originally R, and they that cut it down. That is a shame. Yes. So who knows if there will be a copy that, you know, a director's cut or... You know, yeah, that unrated. is a shame, and I, I would yeah. be very interested in seeing a, an unrated cut of um, of Megan actually, because I was expecting more of a fun splatter fest at times um, yeah. with some of the kills uh, and that kind of stuff. As a as a satire, I think it was really quite good, and I wasn't yes. necessarily. Expecting that level, yes, of the, honest of intelligence, yeah, yes, honest, self aware intelligence to come out of this movie. I was expecting silliness, yeah, and I was expecting people, people were referring to this movie as campy. This isn't a campy movie, I mean, there are elements of campiness to it, like you know. Megan kind of gets mauled by a dog and then she's still talking in her very straight robot voice whilst her hair is all messed up and she just leaves and things <laughs> like you know thing, things like that I, I, felt I very think, I think silly. our definition and, I think our definition of campiness is a little bit different but I, think, but I think no campy in terms of just you know you're mostly playing it serious you know what you have you know what your story is you know that it's kind of crazy and weird and you are winking at the camera you let us know that you are aware of kind of how far-fetched this is like moments of her playing toy related songs on the piano like she's playing toy soldiers on the piano like, now yes that the fact that and, she's singing titanium as like yes, a lullaby things I like that just felt about to campy that and well. very much winky to the camera to but me. that was only small elements and i think there's elements of, of megan as a character yeah no i wouldn't call, the, are, call the movie wholly itself campy and the, i think and there this were is what and this is what i'm 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 saying i think no. megan as a character at times has a wink to the camera element to her which i very very much enjoy but i did see people referring to this movie as campier and this is not a campy movie this is a, this is a satirical movie 100 percent. this is at its best i think when it's a when it's at its most satirical i think it it, it um apologies for that it plays on technological horror very well yeah, and like technological they were... horror, scientific horror, uh, scientific advancement. The 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 the, the... Dr uh, not the drawbacks. The yeah, well, yeah, the drawbacks. The the kind the of fears. Yes, the, the of, fears of that scientific advancement potentially have. Yes, yeah. The fears of technological advancement, something that has been present in horror fiction since Frankenstein the book in eighteen eighteen. Yeah. So that long you know, ago. It's something very much like, you know, Age of Ultron. Like you have the best of intentions in creating something, but when you do a, a little too good of a job creating it, you know, you yeah. create a murder robot like Tony. Yeah, said. <laughs> precisely. And it's kind, of, it's kind of exactly what happens here. But yeah. I like it as a, as a, a very, very modern, a very, very today installment in the, renowned history of 
t- technological advancement horror. Yes, and, and, and I think and scientific advancement horror. I, I love it for that because you go one step too far. You think you're more intelligent than what you're creating. You think you can play God a bit, and it comes back to bite you. And that's exactly what happens, yes. obviously, in Megan. While being, at times, very, very funny, I think Megan herself, I mean, I don't even know, like, for some reason I didn't look this up or anything else. How was Megan portrayed? Was so it somebody, they, a human so, being? So I saw uh, James of Dead Meat. He was interviewing uh, Jason Bloom and, and um, James Wan, and they were very secretive. They didn't really want to say too much about okay. how they did it. But I kind of saw a few other things and there was some puppetry involved, but then also an yeah. actual girl yeah. wearing kind of prosthetic mask and thing. For That's some what I kind so of I think it was a combination of a real person and puppetry. Okay. That makes <clears throat> and maybe some CGI thrown sense. in there. Um yeah. But yes, like I, even to the point where, you know, in the early stages of creating Megan and they asked her to display confusion and she just does this scary ass smirk and they can't yeah. get her to stop doing it. Like that should have been enough to tell you. <laughs> like, I just think, I think there's an awful lot of fun to be had with it. There's an awful lot of fun to be had with it. But likewise, it's a movie that actually takes itself very, very seriously. And that could come across as its its downfall. Well, no, because, I, I, I think it needed that balance. Are, of course it needed the balance, but I mean in terms of it having wink to the camera moments in there, it having purposely silly moments in there that were clearly there, that, that clearly intentional. Yes. I that, mean, that I... were, for me, the highlights kind of of the movie the 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 entertainment factor of the movie is in its megan kind of being a bit silly in her obsession in her kills in her in her manic kind of protectiveness this is where this is this is the the, the most drawing features of this movie i think that, that, yes, that would bring those, those people but I mean, to even that. I think it's I, you needed that balance of kind of the emotional aspects, you know, the, you the girl losing yes, the girl losing her parents, and then kind of the issues with the aunt not knowing what to do. So she creates Megan to kind of deal with her so that she doesn't, so that that strains their relationship. And you know, the aunt makes a lot of mistakes. So I like that you know they depicted things like that like the difficulty of this situation of taking on this child who's lost her parents you don't really know how to handle it so you kind of put it off and think you're you're you know fixing the problem but you're just making it worse and kind of i like them depicting the strain on their relationship and kind of her you know very negative connection that was building between the girl and megan to where she wasn't listening to her aunt and and you know she kind of became addicted and obsessed to you know having megan around and all these things so i like that that those elements of kind of realness were were peppered into balance kind of the more crazy far-fetched things and and the campy elements because like now i'm thinking even about the opening when they do that kind of furby commercial with like you know a girl sitting at her in her backyard at her dog's grave <laughs> like you would not see that in a co- kids commercial but they in this world that is yes, exactly. a normal kind of commercial that would play on tv and then you get this weird furby toy and um so things yeah. like that i think I think they were able to find a clear balance between the kind of more serious emotional aspects and kind of the, the kind of more sillier things. And and I think it worked well together. I wasn't like, I I didn't feel like the tones were, were at odds with each other. I think everything kind of molded really well, melded really well and, 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 you know, crafted a really fun story in general. No. And that's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at. I I think it, I, I also think it is balanced very very well it is just the the genuine seriousness of some parts of this movie was unexpected it was unexpected for me going into this movie i was not expecting (laughs) full legitimate i was because i was expecting a ridiculously simple kind of by the numbers just mentally insane slasher 
Yeah. And it wasn't that. It wasn't that at all. And for some reason, I feel like that's what I was advertised. Yeah. But what I got from it was, was the satire that I really, really liked. I mean, the entire toy funky company or whatever it's called. I just think he's great. That CEO guy was just f- phenomenal as a character. Yes, he's so good. Of, of somebody the, the, in that position, yeah. And th- that entire world, that entire building is filled with caricatures. And I, I, I love that for it. But the genuine heartfelt moments between, you know, Alison Williams and, and, and her niece were not what I was expecting in this movie. I was expecting something a little bit distanced from any sort of emotion, really, and something that that felt. Not as I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying the movie was deep, but you know, not caring about any sort of emotion that yeah. people had to it towards each other. And the movie did care about its character relationships, and I just didn't think it would because I don't think that was the movie that was advertised. Yeah. Um, so, but the so fact we did get that, nice and the, yeah. a, a, a very nice surprise. The fact that we did get that, the fact it was well balanced really really pleasantly surprised me as well yeah and, and i think and, and you know, structurally how the thing kind of build up how megan's obsession builds up how megan learns more and more and becomes that more attached to katie yeah. to, to and get as insane as she ends up and, and more detached to doing. kind of yeah and more detached to kind of what death means and what taking life means and kind of yeah not really understanding the the extent of something like that um and also i think there was an effort to kind of make the tech make sense you know there was you know, i don't the, understand a lick of it no, because i'm not a techie person me neither but like like i think the time they took to kind of explain it and try to make it make sense to a novice person watching it i think was yeah. was, was an important thing because you're dealing with something really kind of weird and crazy and you know there is kind of tech that's similar to something like this so the fact that they really took the effort to kind of make it feel like something like this could really exist and you know how she works on it and how she explains it and how she's kind of working on it with her team all of that felt very real to someone who doesn't really understand that kind of stuff so i like little moments and efforts like that to, yeah. to ground it in some way when you're kind of dealing with these kind of crazier things it, i also it, think you know it legitimized uh, it legitimized what was going on yes and it's something that the the best of technological horror throughout its history has also done Yes, it's legitimized make, what was going on. That it's make made, sense. made the science somewhat understandable. Yes. And rather I than think it just being just a bunch of jibber you know, jabber nonsense. Or, exactly. You know. Um, but I think also like you know, a movie that definitely was trying to do this, but I don't think really pulled off the execution was the Child's Play remake. Um ah, in okay. that film, in that film that Chucky was a kind of AI thing that was connected to your house and connected yeah. to all your devices and all kinds of stuff and then kind of develops this you know sentience so you know I think that movie tried to do what Megan does but they didn't have as much satire they didn't have the kind of wink to the camera type things uh, you know they didn't have as much self awareness which I think in general the Child's Play franchise has a self awareness uh, so that movie didn't oh, really yeah. have that so it was definitely very much like what Megan did but Megan had that wink to the camera had that play into the satire in front of it whereas Child Play kind of p- tried to play it a little bit more straight so it, I, it didn't play as well so I, I like that Megan actually kind of found the balance of that kind of story and i do definitely now get the the fun little arguments happening between megan and chucky i think the latest one i've yes. seen has been really great um chucky i think he said something like you can see megan if you want but she'll never be the og and megan quote t- tweeted it okay boomer <laughs> works like, it makes sense it- it fits. And then Chucky came back with like a comment maybe like five or six hours later. <laughs> and then somebody like replied, like, okay, Chucky had to co- wait after had to sit for five hours to figure out that comeback. Oh, dear. 
you know so oh dear uh yes the, the fact that like chucky and megan are kind of fighting on on the interwebs is great and uh i it definitely is. get you know because she's kind of the new era of that type of thing which the new child's play tried to do but didn't quite make it work so well i, I mean so look, the megan. thing is i think the thing of what mate what works in child's play is that obviously it's supernatural yes the original the in original. the original the and the the entire original series of it is based around the supernatural element of merging one soul into a doll and things like that yeah. and so it's not the same as as, as megan the, that yes. is just that is a created artificial robot um android whatever whatever what's megan actually called mark three, three. G generated android whatever android, it is something like that yeah something um but i really really did have a lot of fun with this movie i just i, I have to still kind of remind myself that it just it wasn't never felt like a horror movie to me it, it felt like a a sci-fi satire okay i mean had it, I been more gore, I think it, had it been more gory, would it have felt more like a horror certainly movie and i think that's simply because that's what i was expecting and i think because of what i was expecting i said okay give me some splatter and then i didn't get some splatter no. but i still liked it i have to kind of sit more and realize that this didn't feel like I've called it technological horror. I think it fits into technological horror very, very well. It does. Of course yeah. it does. But it it, I, it wasn't as wasn't as horror fueled as I thought it would be. And this clearly comes down to the decisions to cut the rating down to a PG thirteen. Or oh no, but but then again, you say it was a PG thirteen. In Britain it is actually rated as a fifteen okay it is actually which is the equivalent to r oh so so but i i still felt that there was yeah not, no the like, there. there was not yeah, the no, gore. i think it was originally here to be like a full r with like showing more of the gore and things like that but because the trailer picked up so much buzz and they knew people were going to kind of flock to this movie to get more butts in seats they changed it to, to get more people in um i mean but I yeah can... like I can totally I think, understand that. And I see, I feel like they cut around those things well enough that you still got the sense of kind of the terror and fear and horror of it. But I would definitely love to see more kind of goriness out of, out of some of these kills. I actually, I actually, I actually expected more kills as well. Okay. Like, I don't actually think there was that many kills. Really. No, there weren't that many. But I do love the kind of creepier moments with Megan when she kind of starts talking when she's yes. not supposed to. Or when yeah. you think she's off, but she's not. Or when her, you know, she looks to the side or when she's actually on. And, you know, and these creepy stares that she gives people. And when she started chasing that boy on all fours, like all kinds of just creepy movements that she does. Uh, I think those played into kind of the eeriness uh, of kind yeah. of. Of, of what this movie was going for i just think what i what i appreciated about this movie the most was really not what i thought i would appreciate about this movie the most and i really really enjoyed going to see it yeah. i think it's a, a really surprisingly intelligent satire mm -hmm. genuinely heartfelt at times when it needs to be i think alison williams uh, is great at it and i've yeah. definitely seen the girl before something um, she was i think she was the youngest girl in in haunting of hill house ah okay yeah she's the great one, the one who was scared of the bent neck lady yeah. ah that'd be why that'd yeah. be why she is good yeah yes um no i thought she was great as well yeah um like the very kind of I've... defiant moments and the confused moments and you know her being in this new place and uh you know yeah. her when she's with the therapist and she doesn't want to talk to her and you know everything yeah. in this movie works megan is appropriately creepy herself i just i wish there was an unrated version i wish there was more yes, hopefully gore. Hopefully. yeah and That's i know that they opened drawback. it up they left it open to potential kind of sequels and things like oh, that of course so. they did yes. but that is my that's my one drawback 
Yeah. Is I wish they would have just kind of gone I for the gore. wanted more of a gore fest. This movie still would have done well without being, I think, a PG-13, so. I think it would have been because I think people, I We're think really having having a marketing campaign that it has had. Yeah. It's it been genius, really. Having I those mean, Megans kind of showing up at special events and things like yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's made, I mean, it's done what, the movie did it's made people want to get a megan and they shouldn't be wanting to get a megan because you shouldn't want I mean, to get a megan jason blum dressed up you. as megan for halloween before the movie had even come jason out blum's so. a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> jason, jason blum's a very good horror producer yes, very yes. good <laughs> um but he's also a weirdo a good weirdo not a bad weirdo yeah. but there's a there's Megan fever going around and it's still very much present. Yes. And I think I know this because my parents have seen advertisements for Megan and gone like, oh that looks that looks quite fun actually. And that wow. just doesn't happen <laughs> when it comes to movies like this. Wow. So and I, so I know the marketing on it's good. It's working. I know okay. the marketing on it's good. Okay. Um, and I, I think it's entirely justified because I, I think it was a great first movie of 2023. Yes. And, and like usually, you know, for me. I really you know January, people always say January is kind of the month where you put your movies and they you don't hear from them or see them or nobody cares or they don't do well. But, you know, Megan, I think, was a solid January release for sure. So, well, you say that in the uh, you say that in the US because in Britain we always get the awards stuff in January. Uh, okay. Um, but I don't think that even exists anymore because I think I think that existed in the world of you simply get blockbusters in the summer, yeah. which also doesn't exist anymore because you get blockbusters for Anytime, Valentine's yeah. Day. All March, the way through to Christmas. April, yeah. So just having January, like, why can't you have great January movies? Of course yeah. you can. And this great is one thing. To, great way to kick off the year for sure. Great movie. Had a lot of fun with it. A good